Welcome to Ethnography, Australia style. I'm going to take you on a big adventure. Come along with me and have a listen to the Murrumbidgee River corridor system here on the traditional lands of the Ngunnawal people in Canberra, Australia. Ethnography is a field of scientific research in which we insert ourselves into particular communities to observe the habits and practices of people. But in this instance, we're inviting you into the river community, into the community of water, to observe the habits and practices of your riverscape or waterscape. And as autoethnographers, you will be recording your human story in relation to the story of the river. In participant observation, which is the classic form of ethnography, we observe participants in communities other than our own. So we try and become part of another culture or group, be it a youth group, a neighbourhood, a clan, a sports club, and so on. In observation, which advances the more general participant observation, we can also employ the method of exterior looking. Where we're not part of the group, we are observing. So we can't be the water, but we can observe the water. We try to understand what is happening by observing situations, movements, behaviours and interactions. However, observation is always joined by our interpretive lens. For example, in the section of the river you've chosen, observe the nature of the waterscape. Is there any infrastructure? Can you notice the personality or character of the river, its living conditions? Can you observe who is here permanently or temporarily and under what conditions? How do the different actors interact with each other or influence each other? And what do the living conditions and interactions mean for the participants? So a good place to start is by having a good snoop around. Once you've chosen your waterscape, just go and have a bit of a look and decide which part of it you're going to examine. With conversations and interviews, we can find out how the human actors experience the field or the area, the river, and what meaning it has for them and how they see the world or a certain aspect of this waterscape. So cultural meanings, ways of understanding, subjective interpretation, all matter in this kind of ethnographic method. Talking to each other in ethnography can take place informally in the way of everyday conversations, discussions and narrative exchange. For example, when you're hanging out at the river with friends and you meet other people who are hanging out. A formal interview is a little bit more organised. It has a specific setting and you usually have a specific aim. The certain data you want to get from your interviewees. For this, you will need consent and an appointment with the interviewee. It is our task as researchers to interpret the statements of our interviewees and place them in a larger context where possible. Talking to water, animals and plants is of course not as possible as talking to people, but we can learn a great deal with interest in their lives, empathy for their needs and wonder about their activities and expressions so that we don't make little people or smallness out of their great life. We can generate data 
by taking photos, filming and recording sound, like you're seeing in this video. These methods are especially suitable to convey our biosocial reality directly to our readers and listeners. The character of a river with the sound recordings and its murmuring or rushing at certain places, or the interaction of water and plants, hoof and paw prints of animals, the marks of a kangaroo on the riparian zone, all these movements and actions of the protagonists in our research field really matter. So, as you go along, ask yourself some questions, such as, how different does the river sound upstream from downstream, or with the addition of human activity, or the residence of fauna amid the flora? You might also like to keep a nature diary and make sketches of what you see. This would fit into the method of photos, videos, and sound recordings. In fact, all the naturalists from a couple of hundred years ago only had this means of recording. Such evidence as this can become historical testimonies or they can possibly be compared with older historical recordings, such as a river before it's been denatured, during its denaturing and after its denaturing, which we call rewilding. When using such documents, however, you have to be aware that you, as the photographer or filmmaker, are unconsciously biased by your own subjective opinion. For example, do you romanticise when you're at the river and only take the beautiful shots? Or will you take shots with electricity pylons or dam walls or pipelines? All of this content matters. So contemporary documents include things like newspaper articles, private letters and photographs, records and archival material. They can be important evidence of our cultural practices. Artifacts can be both understood as traditional and modern in the way that we're looking at it. While documents can provide valuable information for our research, the collection of artifacts is a little more complex we can photograph modern artefacts such as garbage by the river or collect it and make an artwork out of it. Or disuse technology and infrastructure and incorporate that into our research portfolio. These aspects can shed light on other parts of our research topic. Counting and measuring events can greatly enrich our interpretive observations. In many cases, social phenomena can also be mapped well quantitatively and qualitatively. For example, how many people visit a particular nature reserve each year and how much traffic noise and garbage does that create? So there's a lot of tensions that we'll observe when we're doing our ethnography. What we do at the end is put this all together to come up with various data sets. And this can include graphics like charts and tables, as well as images and notes. We'll be looking at how the coexistence of water, animals, plants and people is concretely represented in our riverine communities and how this coexistence can be explained personally and theoretically. Water is its own self, inhabiting many different environments. Riverscapes are particular parts of the water story because rainfall travels through rivers and streams to connect with the next stage of the water cycle. Along the way, water feeds agriculture, farming and industry and tourism, and it also conveys commodities and people along the sea lanes of the planet, as well as supplying hydroelectric power. Rivers nurture fish and frogs and grasses and other flora and fauna and microbial particles, as well as moving rocks and pebbles 
downstream. In amongst the pebbles and the rocks, there's other forest debris and occasional bits of rubbish carried along by their currents. In fact, we could think of rivers as super aquatic highways. And for all we know, there is traffic control, population diversity, fringe communities, and so on, all living in and around the riverscape. So the river is part of what we call a complex adaptive system where different ecosystems within themselves, but also in relation to neighbouring ecosystems and human systems, operate. So the big questions are, how can we sustain all the ecologies within this complex adaptive system, not just the humans? And how can we get the balance right? One thing we can do is to rethink our intergenerational practices and habits and become willing to cross-examine our own terms of engagement and our regard for water. The European Commission recently committed to fund research that could return 24,000 kilometres of dammed water to a free-flowing state. We call this rewilding and the rewilding movement is gaining traction throughout the world. After all, we humans are really just a drop in the ocean of planetary life. And this leaves us with some open and wide questions about how we're going to continue with sustainability. How do we give voice to flora and fauna and rivers more democratically, for example? Is some kind of eco-democracy possible? And what might that look like in your part of the world? What kind of ethnography will you do? We look forward to receiving your contributions. <laughs>